G'day, my name's Stuart from Mad Scientist Prospecting. I'm currently stuck in emergency. I had planned to do a bunch of videos, well-crafted videos on the V8 proposal, but I'm, fortunately, I'm here. So I'm just gonna do one off the cuff about the incompetence of this proposal and how, look, really, the consultants, the professionals at V8 should have known better. It's a well-established fact that if you don't engage with the community for a conservation measure, if you don't get the community on board, its chances of success are almost zero. And we mostly know this from the utter disasters of many, many projects that have been implemented in the developing world. Uh, but a great example of a project that's recently been doing the rounds on social media that is working because of community engagement is the protection of the cheetah in Africa. And a lot of conservation measures have come in and they're being successful because of the engagement with the local farming communities. And one of the things that was recognised way back when restrictive measures didn't work was that you had to compensate the farmers you had, and you had to help them uh, overcome the, the consequences of the conservation measures that were coming in. Namely, that the cheetahs were eating more of their livestock because the cheetah numbers started increasing. Or rather, even when the cheetah numbers were going down, the cheetahs were still eating farmers' livestock. And the thing that's been saved a lot of social media attention is the um, funding and training, the funding of the training and supply of guard dogs to farmers to protect their flocks from cheetahs, insulating them and protecting them from the negative consequences of the conservation measures brought in to protect the cheetah and the resulting fabulous news that the cheetah population is recovering. Now, that's best practice. As an environmental consultant, that's what we're employed to do. Not just come up with fancy ideas of how to reduce a negative impact or how to increase a positive impact, but to look at the broader picture, the holistic picture, and identify unforeseen consequences and areas which may lead the program, the policy, to fail. And the key area where policies fail is where you have a lack of community engagement. Now with the VIAC proposal, so many of the communities that use the state forest have had no engagement and no thought's been given to the reactions of those communities to being banned from the state forest. Now, if you look at a number of these different communities, there are a small number of individuals who are already breaking the rules and having a negative impact on the forest. That's, you can't argue with that. But banning the entire community because of those bad apples isn't going to stop those people from breaking the law because they're already breaking the law. Like if you make a new law or change the nature of the law, What's this, why are they going to why are they going to stop breaking the law? In fact, what's likely is say for example in the motocross community, there's a small number of people who are you know cutting their own trails, creating erosion, making a nuisance of themselves. But if you ban the entire motocross community from these forests, there's going to be a fraction of people who are currently obeying the laws who are just going to say stuff it. Since it's, I'm breaking the law to enter the forest. Well, what, what do I care if I break the other laws? You know? in, if you look at hunting, now generally the people that uh, are a bad example of hunting don't tend to be members of the hunting community. They tend to be new entrants who have just got themselves a new toy and want to shoot the nearest thing, especially bo with bows. But it, there are a number of bad apples amongst the hunting community. But the Wildlife Act means that it's illegal to shoot native fauna. <laughs> it's already illegal. Turning a state forest into a national park isn't going to stop those people from shooting kangaroos, wombats and whatever. You know, but there is going to be a fraction of the hunting community that is currently obeying the law that are just going to say stuff it. You know, I hunt to feed my family, there's a kangaroo, I want the kangaroos to taste good, bang. That's gonna happen. Ah, uh, I thought my name had been called and I might be able to get off this cat, but no such luck. 
Uh, and amongst all the other communities that are going to be affected by this VIAC proposal, dog walkers, campers, horse riders, prospectors, four-wheel drivers, all of those communities have bad apples. But the number of people breaking the law is going to go up after this proposal is implemented. That's just human nature, just the way it is. And the lack of forethought from VIAC, from the people employed by VIAC, the, the, the fact that this hasn't been foreseen, the fact that this proposal is actually going to result in greater impact on these forests rather than in lesser impact, is just, that's not an unforeseen circumstance. That's not an unforeseen consequence. That's incompetence. Because experienced consultants know that if you don't engage the community, if you don't have the community on board with what you're doing, you're going to have a negative consequence, or at best, a neutral outcome. But that's not what we're going to see here. There's a lot of anger in the community, a lot of people pissed off, and unfortunately, human nature is going to mean that some of those people are going to do the wrong thing. And we shouldn't not do a policy because of threat but we should be aware of what human nature is. And if we want the best outcomes, we need to engage with communities rather than dictate to them. So anyway, hopefully I'm gonna be seen soon. I'm gonna try and do some more videos where I can actually, well, properly craft a video as soon as I can, but I've been having some issues. So catch you guys around and I'll talk to you later.